Now, today is Feast of Christ the King. Yes. That's because it's the last Sunday of the liturgical year and it's placed there. Last Sunday of ordinary time, I should did say. Did you see what they did in Poland? What did they do? They had a new king in Poland. A new king? Yes. Go on. They established Jesus Christ as the eternal king of Poland. Ah, they've consecrated. Oh, law. I just thought that was actually very oh, nice. Right, right. right. Law. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're, you know? I mean, they're going to give it to the Polish. Good on them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, they you know, they they got they got trouble on there, on the eastern border, and they've right. got trouble in Brussels. Right. They're kind of there. Uh, yeah, good on them. Yeah, yeah. But of course, only the elites were ever communists. Yeah. The people were always um, yes. more faithful to the faith than any other people until the Irish went. Yeah. So it being feast of Christ the King, what we have to uh, just explain a little bit about that. That is. Um, as, as Michael said in relation to Poland, Christ should be the king, consecrated king of all nations, and every nation which does that can gain special graces from him. And Pope Pius XI in 1925 instituted this feast because by the early 20th century, especially after World War I, it was clear that the, um, the West was going downhill, that it pretty much destroyed an entire generation of its best people in the Psalm and Passchendaele, and that was also Australians as well, New Zealanders, it ranged all over. And secularism was heavily on the rise, and communism too. I mean, although it's well known that Labour won the general election in 1945 in Britain, with a huge majority, it's not so well known that they won the election in 1924 with a minority government, and then in 1931, but, they, but although they were out of power um, after the national government was formed, they came back in the 1935 general election, they secured 200 seats in the House of Commons, which meant basically, it's a kind of like England is basically a little microcosm of what was going on in Europe, growth of the Social Dem Democratic Party in Germany, which is a very, very Marxist party grown from the late 19th century. And of course in France, France partly fell in six weeks to Germany because it was so divided between left and right. So we have this feast day, this great feast established by the Pope in the context of a Europe which is going to secularism, to communism and socialism, and um, has been devastated in the World War. And of course, all the, all the thoughts that Europeans had, and they did think this way in the 19th century, that we're just going forward to more and more progress. But this wasn't the way it happened in 1914, that all came crashing down. And the question then is, what do you do? You have to rethink the, the way we live, the normal European way isn't gonna work. So you either become deeply committed to Catholicism, or you just abandon it and say, look, this whole way of life is not working. We go to atheistic communism. Mm -hmm. And of course, 1925 was just eight years after the Soviet revolution. So it's extremely significant, this feast that Pope Pius XI established. So Christ is king of nations, whether they like it or not, whether they're rebels or not, but if they don't acknowledge this, they're rebels against Christ. But we can say more than that, that Christ is king of the universe. 